Hello there. Welcome back to day 16 of our free retreat, freedom retreat. Uh, I want to talk today about ups and downs. A pretty normal aspect of being a human being, no matter what your circumstances are. We all have to deal with them. Some things go well, some things don't go so well. And the interesting thing is, uh, is how people cope with the challenges that life throws at them. One of the things that's amazed me when I've worked in places like um, in Ethiopia during the famine or in the refugee camps is how when everything is really pretty terrible for people, they can still find something to be happy about, find joy in something, in a little bit of food that day or a little bit more favorable weather conditions. Something goes better than they expected. It seems to be part of our human state that we're not automatic. Well, mood doesn't correlate necessarily to the situation we're in. We can find good and bad everywhere. And also some people who have it all and still manage to be pretty miserable. And one of the things that, the ways that yoga helps with that challenge of, of riding the ups and downs is because it stimulates the vagus nerve. Vagus is uh, after the Latin name for wandering, and uh, it's the longest nerve in the body, and it goes from your brain all the way down through your heart and your lungs and into your digestive system. And it's feeding back a lot of information all the time to your brain and control center, and then issuing instructions to your organs. It's deciding what heart, your heart rate needs to be right this second. And we're used to looking at our heart rate over a minute, say. But if you've ever monitored heart rate variability, you'll see that your heart rate actually increases as you inhale, and your heart has more work to do, and decreases a little as you exhale. And of course, it changes according to exertion and emotion and body temperature, other factors. And the same for our digestion, it's constantly uh, on the move. The vagus nerve is, is controlling all us really being involved at all. But one way we can be involved is to improve our vagal tone, so that's like the condition of this, of this nerve. And yoga has, there's research to show that yoga is very helpful with that. So I'm just going to show you a few things you can do to improve that vagal tone. The first one is a, a kind of breathing that is used a lot in yoga, ujjayi breath it's called, some of you are regular yoga practitioners. For others, um, ocean breath is a good way to describe it because of the kind of noise that it makes. It's a bit close. And to activate it, if you think about the part of your throat that you tighten when you want to whisper instead of talking, when you force the air out. Yeah, and that's what we're activating. So if you breathe out using that, a bit like when you're doing, putting steam on something to clean it. So, to give you the feel for it. We're going to do it with our mouths closed through our nose. And you should start to hear the noise on the inhale and on the exhale. And it can seem a bit strange at first if you're not used to it because we're used to trying to keep our breathing as quiet as possible, aren't we? I want to be snorting and snoring, puffing and puffing. But it's actually very helpful in stimulating that rest and response, uh, parasympathetic nervous system, and balancing the efforts of the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight, let's go for it, part of our system, and keeping them in a good balance. Yeah. So that's, a, that's something you can do anywhere and everywhere. So let's just do five breaths in and out like that. Both feet on the floor, back up, spine straight, shoulders away from the ears. Maybe just put your shoulders up and <laughs> let them go a couple of times. Up, 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 up. <coughs> yeah, loosen up. So five in and five out. And I'll just do this to indicate so we don't need to speak.
Lovely. Good. Now the next thing is so requires so little effort. It probably doesn't feel like an exercise at all, but it's interesting how it does affect your state and your your feelings and what's going on inside your body. And it's called the half smile. Maybe you've seen that on a statue of a Buddha. So for the half smile, you're going to have your lips together. It's not a toothy smile. And it's, it's involving very little tension. So a normal smile is using your lips and your cheeks and your jaw muscles, maybe your eyebrows going up. So this is much gentler than that. Lips together just to relax your lips and feel like you're turning up the corners of your mouth. That's the slightly. And I don't know about you, but I already started to feel a shift in my body when I was doing that. A little bit of a tingling, a sense of well-being. So this one, because the vagus nerve goes through the heart, it's going to open that up, the heart and our lungs. I'm going to do that with the hands on the shoulders to start with. Exhale as you curl in. Tuck your chin in. Relax the back of your neck. Inhale as you open up the flower. Taking in everything. It all starts with the sky. Exhale, pulling it back in. Hands on the shoulders. Inhale, open up to everything the world has for you. Exhale. Inhale and feel the joy of the inhale. Feel your rib cage. Your lungs, your collarbones, the whole opening up. Exhale. Last one. In, open. And then just your hands back on your lap. And the simplest thing of all that we can all that we all do intuitively is just have a good old stretch. First thing in the morning before you get out of bed, once you get to the edge of the bed, before after you brush your teeth, after you've been sitting in the chair for a little while on your laptop or watching TV, being sedentary, and just doing that sends new messages to your body. There's something happening with some aliveness here and no threat because we're being open. So our subconscious is saying you wouldn't do that if there's a threat to be guarded. So that opening in itself is sending a message to uh, through your vagus nerve to say, it seems to be okay now. She's all right for the moment. Okay, uh, and to finish with, we do cat cow, which I know some of you will already know. So similar to the opening and closing before but this time it's going in this direction because we're focusing on our belly the vagus nerve also goes there and it's controlling our digestion which of course we want to be in good shape because that's where we're getting all the nourishment out of our food and eliminating the things we don't want so as you exhale curl and pull your tummy so you're trying to pull it towards your spine really hollow in your belly there curl forward and then inhale, do the opposite, push your waist forward, your bum back, your chest forward. A nice big inhale. And exhale. And inhale. Really focus on your tummy as you're doing this. And on the exhale, you're giving a good old squeeze, like wringing out a cloth. And then on the inhale, you're stretching it out, giving it room to clear itself up. Inhale, a good squeeze. And exhale, stretch it out so everything can move around. One more. Inhale, squeeze. 
and exhale, stretch. Good. Good. So the way that your vagus nerve is sending messages, it's getting messages from your body and taking them up to your brain, then using those messages to take down into the body to calibrate what's going on. So we're doing the same there. We're dealing with our ups and downs, the inhale, the exhale, the challenging situation, the easy situation. And we're taking it in our stride. And that's our free treat for today. See you tomorrow.